before we get into this, there might be some spoilers for the film Mandy, so if you haven't seen it yet and you're really worried about spoilers, maybe don't watch this or come back to it later, but I don't know. I don't feel like I spoiled anything. No, like, real plot points. All right. We need to talk about Mandy. This film is an amazing step for the director Panos Cosmatos. I apologize if I butchered his name, but first, a bit of context. His first film, Beyond the Black Rainbow, was amazing. Maybe lacking a bit of broad appeal, because it was very haunting and droning in nature, it was a film that lingered on shots and the music was hypnotic and meant to draw you in, but to a broader audience it might have felt slow. The action in Beyond the Black Rainbow doesn't really kick off until very late in the film. The movie pivots from being a brainwashing psychedelic experiment into almost a slasher flick. This film is a distinct look and feel, and a striking color palette. I felt that Beyond the Black Rainbow was bold, unique, and interesting, and I'm assuming the producers of Mandy felt the same, because this is Panos with a budget. Mandy is a horror-esque movie experience that feels like a 70s pulp fantasy novel paperback dropped acid with an 80s horror flick and they tripped for about 24 hours and when they sobered up they had written a pretty great script. Mandy is a revenge story. It starts with a bit of a slow burn. It has a hypnotic, droning tone, much the same as Beyond the Black Rainbow. Everyone in this film gives a great performance. Andrea Riseborough gives a subtle, elegant portrayal of Mandy, reclusive fantasy artist and girlfriend of one, Nick Cage. Linus Roach plays our main villain, Jeremiah Sand, who is tyrannical and confident. He's emboldened by his worshippers and his own perceived divinity, although his character is plagued with doubt and insecurity. It makes for a Jacqueline and Hyde sort of push and pull. He enlists the help of some Cenobite leather-clad bikers from hell, and they are spooky and strangely nostalgic in a way, making me think of both Hellraiser as well as Mad Max. Lastly, we have Nick Cage. I've heard nothing but praise for this performance. Cage gets a lot of flack for his quote, overacting, but in the context of this acid-infused psychedelic horror film, it's more than welcome. I personally love Cage when Nick Cage goes full Nick Cage. It seems that his caginess mixed with the visual palette of this film is somehow making people change their minds about our boy, Nick Cage. And that's a good thing. His performance is nuanced and subtle when it needs to be, and over the top and insane when the action kicks in. The vibrant colors of this film blended together with the over the top violence and gore puts this film in a category all of its own. The film manages to feel like fine art, all while being paradoxically lowbrow trash. I don't want to spoil anything, I just wanted to give you enough context to be intrigued. I want you to go see this film. This hyper-stylized romp through psychedelic action and horror needs to be seen by everyone, and that's why we need to talk about Mandy. Sound off in the comments if you've seen Mandy. I'd love to know what you think. You don't have to agree with me. You might have thought it was awful, but I would love to chat about this film. Actually, if you hated it, that would make for a great conversation. Anyways, I would love to know your thoughts on the film Mandy if you've seen it, and if you haven't seen it, please go see Mandy.